Are you tired of having your smartphone battery die without warning? Do you want a better idea of what kind of charging cycle your phone is getting? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to use IFTTT to get this information. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we will talk about how to use IFTTT to help manage your smartphone battery. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to use IFTTT to help manage your smartphone battery. First is going to be using IFTTT with your smartphone. And if you're not used to using it or haven't used it before, trust me, you got this. Now, the next thing is how to log the phone being charged using IFTTT when the phone comes off charge. And probably more important than anything else, depending on your situation, is knowing when the phone hits that 15% charge level. Because I don't know about you, but I seem to be in the wrong place with no extra external USB battery that I can plug in to help get me through so I can get it back to a regular charger. If you're not familiar with IFTTT, it stands for if this, then that. It basically allows you to enhance or build upon things that are either already in your smart home, your smartphone, or, or some other devices to get you some of the features you'd like to have, but the manufacturer just hasn't made available or put in for a variety of reasons. So this is good for up to three uh, instances as far as when you start configuring some of this, depending on how you configure some of the services and each thing you configure is going to create your own app. You're limited by IFTTT to having only three of those unless you subscribe to their service or depending on how the particular service you're using has been set up. Some of them don't count against the three. At least that's what I found so far. To get everything to work, you're going to have to have the IFTTT app on your smartphone. Now, when I'm saying smartphone in this case, this is only going to apply to the Android phones. For some reason, this is simply not available on the Apple iOS side. But that's one of the reasons I'm using an Android phone, because there's so much more that you can do. So you just need to install the IFTTT app. If you haven't already created an account, take a few minutes. And you may find it a little bit easier possibly to do it from a desktop. But create that, and then you're good to go. So we're already into the app at this point. So we will click on Create, Add. And it's going to give us a list of recommended services. But what we'll do is we'll go down here to Android phone, or Android battery, rather. And we'll just get that one started. So you see we got three options, and we're going to use all three. So we'll first do is when device is plugged in. Now, plugged in means when it goes on charge. And then we can tap on Add. And then we will go to Google Sheets. We'll just say Add a Row. And by default, it's going to create the spreadsheet if it's not already there. And if you're doing this with multiple phones, obviously, you'd want to have multiple spreadsheets. So it will say Occurred At, give you the, ba the battery level at the time, you're starting the charge. I've never worried about the drive folder path, so we can just say continue and continue. Now, you don't necessarily want to receive notifications when you're setting this up to run because that may get a little annoying if it's tripping quite a bit. It's helpful for diagnostic purposes, but other than that, I would probably leave it turned off. So we'll tap finish and it says connect it. Now, if you don't see the Google Sheets option, you will need to add that as a service, but it should pretty much walk you straight through. But I do a lot of Google service related things with IFTTT, so that's why it didn't do that for me. If you ever want to disable this, you can sit there and either archive it and it puts it into an A area where you can't call it back from, or you can just disconnect it. Okay, see at this point, it has counted against the one of the three because there's quite a bit of customization there. So that's fine. We've taken care of alerting you when the phone's being charged. To go through the process of telling you when it's come off charge, and that's to me just about as important as only when it's going on charge because if your phone keeps going off charge and yet it's still either laying on the... Uh, smart charger, if you've got it, one that's set up where you can just lay it on one of those charging pads, if it keeps losing its connection, that's valuable information for you to know. So if you're not taking it off and yet it's registering that it's 
being unplugged, you may have a problem and you need to start looking at whether it's the phone or the smart charger. So at this point, we'll click on create, we'll go to add, and we'll go down here to Android battery and we'll say device is unplugged. Then we will click add, go back down here to Google Sheets, there we go. And we will add a row and we're just gonna, I leave all the settings normally at their defaults because I found out whoever's created these has probably got a better idea of what's going on than, than I do. So we'll tap on continue. Okay, we've done everything we want to there. Continue, and then uh, it says connected, so we're good there. So we'll tap on the arrow in the left-hand part of the screen. So now it says we've got two of the three that we can create, which is fine for testing purposes. I mean, this is a, a fair allowance because having three items referencing the same phone is or same device is probably not something a lot of people would do. Now we're going to watch about what to do if the phone hits that 15% charge level because that's at a low enough level, you still got a fair amount of battery time left and a fair amount may be hopefully a half hour, a little bit more, but you also, if you have 15%, you're using the phone a lot, either for phone calls or other things, 50% may be low enough. You need to go find a way to charge it. So we'll click on create. We'll tap on add. We'll go down here to Android battery and we'll tap drop. So below 15% and we'll tap add. Now you might think about doing just you know, if you go to this Google spreadsheet, that's not really going to help you. So what we may want to do is, do we have an option here for the IFTTT client? Okay, well, let's go to notifications. You can send a notification from the IFTT apps, which then should just do a pop-up on your screen and make sure you don't have notifications sound turned off or you're at least hopefully checking it a little bit closer. It may be easier to get that than it would be to see the battery icon in, in, in micro micro print saying 15%. So we'll say, we'll just say, send a notification and it will send the notification from the IFTT app to your phone. So it should pop up just like a test text message. We're going to leave this message at default. If somebody gets a little slow with figuring out that when it goes off, they need to, you know, get their device to a charger. You might have to be a little more blunt with them, but I don't think that, you know, for a lot of us, that's going to happen. So we'll click on continue, continue, and finish. Okay, so at that point, we've got all three created. Now, we can create no more apps at this point unless you subscribe to the service. But again, for testing purposes, this should get you up and running. I thought it was important. Now, you've seen how to set up the three different IFTTT apps to watch your smartphone. But here's the output you would see off those first two about when it was starting and stopping charges. So we're actually in the spreadsheet that it creates. So there is going to be, we can widen that column out a little bit, shows you the date and time when the event occurred, whether it was charging or unplugged. And remember, unplugged means taking off charger. Shows you the battery level at that point and whether it was the wireless charging that my Samsung S9 Plus is capable of doing or if you were on just a regular plug-in, then it would just show battery at that point. So you've got a good idea as to building a history on the charging, because what you want to watch is, while it's not a bad thing for it to sit here at, say, 100%, because if you're charging it overnight, like I do a lot of times, it's going to hit that level. But if you continually, say, are seeing percentages at 15% or below, keep in mind the type of batteries they use on a lot of these devices are not meant for that kind of wide range cycling on a consistent basis. If you're continually going from full charge down to, we'll call it less than 5% or running it totally till it quits, that's actually in the long term going to damage the battery. So you want to make sure that while you don't want it sitting 100% charge for more than a few hours, especially with charging at night, because you may not be able to pull it off. And the phone hopefully would shut itself off from charging. But if something happened and didn't, you want to be aware that you might be damaging the battery. But just as importantly, if you're continually taking it all the way down to close to or right to depletion, that's going to damage the battery. Where if you can keep kind of a happy medium and maybe not try to let it drop any more than about 50%. And that may be easier said than done, but at least this gives you a track record to know how the battery uh, level is at when you're taking it on and off charge to give you an idea if when you keep having to charge the battery or charge the phone more and more that you may have a battery that is 
starting to fail on you. Wouldn't you rather know that now than when you got in a critical situation where you really had to have that phone to call for emergency help? If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.